two, one, we're back. So another video with regards to surface area and volumes. So here we have a problem where we're trying to minimize the surface area of a square, basically square based prism. So we have our base kind of right here. And we're going to assume that that is a square based prism. So basically the width and then I guess the depth of this, they're identical. All right. So they're basically equal. So let me kind of remove this D and I'm going to put instead of it W. All right. Well, that's a funny W. So we have this particular um, prism. And what we want to do is we want to be able to minimize the surface area. Now we do have one constraint here given, and we have a constraint that we basically know what the volume is. So we know what the actual volume is equal to. All right, so we know this. So this is given. So this is a, a neat problem to try to get you in grade nine thinking about now minimizing. I did a video on maximizing, for example, with regards to a rectangle, and I will put a link up above to that. You can watch it. It's a nice introduction to kind of thinking about these types of problems. I'm not going to use any calculus here because I'm assuming that you're in kind of lower grades and you've never had calculus before. With a calculus, it's a little bit easier to solve. But here, at least we're going to get some intuition. So imagine that we know the volume. All right. And let's say so the volume is given. So now for simplicity, I'm going to say let the volume be equal to, let's say, one. All right. And let's see what actually happens. OK. And then the volume, OK, it can be in centimeters, in inches, meters, whatever. So the one stands for one meter cubed or one centimeter cubed or one inch cubed, one foot cubed. OK, whatever that may be. OK, but it is one. Now, if we wanted to know what the equation for the volume is, well, we know that for any prism, so base multiplied by the height, okay, whatever that base is. Now, if you've forgotten the volume of a prism, um, this one is rather easy, but for any prism, I'll put a link up above for you there if you wanted to see that. So now once we know this base, for us, it's simply the base is the width times the width or the width times the depth, but they're equal. So that's going to be W squared and then our height, which is H. So that's our volume. And we know that this is equal to one. All right. So this is the volume. Now, if I want to know what the surface area is, so you may remember. So in terms of the surface area, so we have. So we have basically let me duplicate this. So this is kind of the base and then the top, right? So we have a surface area there. So we know what that surface area is. This is W squared and this is W squared. So my surface area is going to be equal to, well, I have two of them. So W squared plus W squared is two W squared. So that's the bottom and the top. Now I also have all the sides. So I have all of these sides. Okay, so which are basically in this case, some kind of rectangles or something of that nature. So let me duplicate this. So I have one, duplicate this two, three. All right, I have four of those. Okay, it's because I have four of those sides. So now with those sides, I know that this is so this is w times h. All right. So that's one wh and then I have wh, wh and wh. So I have four of them. So this is going to be plus four of these whs. So now here is my surface area. Now for this problem, because I know what the volume is, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to write h um, as w or you can do it vice versa. All right. Or you can write W as H. So I want to be able to isolate this particular equation. So this one right here. 
under this formula. I'm going to isolate it for H. Now, why am I doing that? Is because my goal is to be able to minimize. So I want to be able to minimize, minimize this surface area. So I want to make it as small as possible. So I want to find W, all right, which is the width. And I want to find the height such that this surface area is as small as possible. That's what I want to do. I want to be able to find it as small as possible. So one way of doing this is you can always set up simply a table of values and you can set up a table of values for W and you can set up a table of values for H. And then you can find out what the surface area is. So for instance, so this just by intuition, so we can say, okay, what is W? What is H? And then I can substitute my surface area. Now, the volume has been given here, so it is one, but the volume, the actual number is irrelevant. It's just the fact that we know it that's important, and I'm going to show you, all right? So I'm going to show you, and hopefully you'll see a trend, okay? So what happens here? So now, with that the W, what we can do is we can start substituting it. Now, of course, we want W to be greater than zero, because if it's zero, then we don't really have a square prism, so it's something bigger. And just as I have done in that first link that I told you about the rectangle, where I was just substituting the values, all right, in, so I could do the same thing here. So I could substitute, well, what happens if the width is one? What happens if it's two? What happens if it's three, four, five, and so on? And if I do that, <clears throat> then I can find my value for H, because of the fact that, so here, I'm going to take my volume. So my volume equation is equal to W squared H. And since I know V, so I'm going to isolate for H. So notice that's going to be V divided by W squared. Because I can divide both sides by W squared. So here is my H. So that's my H. And so for W is equal to one, if I substitute that in, I'm going to get a value for H. For W is equal to two, I'm gonna substitute for W and I'm gonna get a value for that. So for instance, if, so V we said was equal to one, at least for now. So if W is equal to one, so one squared, so that gives me one, one not two here. So that is my H, all right? So that would have been one. My two, okay, so if I substitute here, W is equal to two, again, I'm going to get, so V is one, and I'm gonna get two and two squared, and that's gonna give me one over four, so that's my H. So notice the H basically shrinks. If I am increasing the width, but the volume stays the same, then the H is constantly going to get smaller. So this would have been, for instance, one over four. Okay. And you can do that with the rest. All right. And you can fill all of these up. Now with those two values, you can then substitute into your surface area and you can find out what is the minimum value for the surface area that you would get. And you can kind of go through it and then see if you can notice a pattern. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna kind of graph this for us so that it's gonna be much easier to see and we're gonna let kind of technology do the work, okay, for us instead of always substituting back in and then checking what the values are. So, because I know that H, so notice right here, so H is equal to V over W squared, so I can substitute that in this equation. So I'm gonna get two W squared plus four W, and my H is V over W squared. Okay, so that's what I would have if I substituted for H inside of this formula. Now I can simplify this, so this is two W squared plus four V notice that you have, so this is W and then you have W squared. So we can use our exponent. Okay. Rules. So this is going to cancel out and you're going to have just one W left there. So that is my surface area 
with respect to W and let's say I now know V okay? and V was equal to one. So let's take a look and see what happens to the surface area as we would be substituting W is equal to whatever, one, two, three, four, and okay, as we keep going. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take this formula right here and I'm gonna okay, use uh, the cool graphics illustrator decimals. So I'm gonna just plug in here, okay, so my area, my overall area is equal to, so two W squared, um, and it was plus, so this was four times V, all right, so four times V, now V was equal to one in this case, divided by W, all right, so this is what we have. Now, we do have a restriction, so I'm gonna put brace brackets, so W has to be obviously bigger than zero, because otherwise we don't have anything, so let's see what happens. So notice this graphs for us what the surface area is. And it is graphing here. So if I kind of do that, so you can see that. So the, 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 the tip there, notice that between, so if W, so W is in my X axis, all right? So W is increasing. That means height is decreasing as we saw it on that table. And look what happens to the surface area. So originally it looks like the surface area blows up, right? So the smaller the W is, okay, then the surface area is blowing up. So notice that what we're plotting here, so on this line, so that red line represents what the surface area is. And then as W gets bigger, the surface area drops. And then we notice that, oh, hmm, that's interesting. The biggest surface area I have here is, or sorry, the minimum surface area is equal to six. That's right here. It's at six right there. And then again, past that point, it seems to go up again. So here we found the minimum surface area available. And now here we can see when does that happen? It happens at W is equal to one. So that's pretty neat. So here what we have is that if volume was equal to one, then this implies that the best width is equal to one. But what does that mean? Well, that means, all right, so this is, so the width is one, the depth is also one, right? Because we have a square prism. And then what is the height? Well, the height, okay, is equal to, so height was equal to, so notice when we substituted one for our height, so this is V over W squared, so volume was one, this is one. Oh, that's interesting. Notice that this is basically now a square prism altogether. This is a cube. So the minimum surface area turns out that it seems to be a cube in the case when V was equal to one. Let's take a look at some other values. What if V was equal to four? What if V was equal to, let's say eight? What if V was equal to, let's say 27? What if V was equal to 64? So we're kind of can put this in here and can see if W is equal to one when volume is equal to one, notice that W and H are equal in order to minimize the surface area. So is that always true? Hmm, so let's take a look. So I'm going to start, so I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna plot another one. So I'm gonna have A is equal to, so two W, okay, so it was squared, plus, right, so this is four times. Now my volume, so let's pick a different volume, all right? So let's say the volume now was eight, all right, divided by W. And let's, again, restrict our W, which is gonna be greater than zero. So let's see what happens now. All right, I'm gonna blow up here. Okay, so here's my second one. So now I have both of them on top there. So notice that we do also see a bottom, a minimum surface area when, now, volume was equal to eight. So now, what did that turn out to be? Huh, it looks like it's two. 
So if I go back here, so this point right here, this is two. So that's when W was equal to two. This is when volume was equal to eight. So, so for this, it turned out that W was equal to two, which implies if you take a look at this and you substitute this in, H is equal to two as well, because volume is eight, W is two, so W squared, which is two squared is four, and eight divided by four is two. So that's interesting. So it looks like it's a pattern. It seems that if you want to minimize the surface area, then you are actually always going to be dealing with a cube. That's how to minimize the surface area for a given volume. And you can test this out, right? So notice I put 27. Now 27 is actually three cubed, all right? 64 is actually four cubed. And that is because I am taking W squared times H. So I am assuming that now W is going to be three. And if it's three, that means height is three. Okay, so that's pretty cool to see this happening. So I'm gonna just, let's say instead of one, let's put 27 here and then see what happens to that red. All right, so notice, okay, so here's the peak, okay, and that's the point. And that point, indeed, so if I blow this up, okay, so that particular point in here, let's see it all the way down here, so that would have been three, okay, so that's what we want to be able to see here. And indeed, it is one, two, three. So there you have it. So you can do that without using calculus per se, but you can use some intuition by understanding what the surface area is and then creating kind of a table of values for yourself to see when is it minimal. Okay, so thank you for watching and we'll see you in a future video. Bye everyone.